Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode, where today we're going to be doing some last minute prep, making two new vehicles before we go into the campaign itself. Finally, the new update is out on the stable branch 2.7, which means the tactical AI is now in the campaign. We have a long time before any update is going to wipe our saves, and now is the perfect time to start the campaign and hopefully complete the entire thing. Of course, we are going to be doing the Nita campaign, the main campaign of the game. Now, with the update, a load of things have been rebalanced. Things like our aircraft at the moment are a little bit broken since the custom jets have been really changed in terms of their cost and how powerful certain things are. Apparently now, smaller jets are more viable and the larger jets are far far more expensive. Right now, our darts cost almost 20,000 each, making them just completely useless. But at that cost, they are utterly rubbish, so I am going to have to mess around with their jets. And loads of changes to the cram cannons. We now have the payload compactors rather than the ammo blocks. We don't actually need the ammo blocks themselves with the pellets directly taking from your ammo. It's all been changed up quite a lot. And the new minimum gauge of cram cannons I believe is 1000 millimeters. Yep, you can't get smaller than that. Which is Weird, honestly, since I have been using 800mm recently, so our bomber's been changed quite a lot, and yeah, loads of things have been changed, but today I want to make two ships, one which is going to be an anti-ship ship using cram cannons, and the other which is going to be anti-air and anti-light. They're both going to be essentially the same basic design, but with different weaponry, and they're going to be our cheap designs, which we can just spam and will accompany our larger vehicles. Now, when it comes to cheap designs, we are going to be going off things like the Marauder, which which is over here. Hello there, Marauder. The Marauder is 5,500 volume and it costs 34,000 materials. This is on the smaller side in terms of cost and uh, a bit more on the medium side with volume. So, so my current goal is each of the vehicles is somewhere around 3,000 volume and 30,000 materials. So cheapish and smallish, so if we lose one, it doesn't really matter too much, and they can be specialised, because that's going to be my big thing this campaign. I want to have specialist vehicles, rather than all-rounders, because that's normally how I build, and it does get a bit boring, since the newest, more updated vehicle will always be used way more than everything else. But this time, I want to mix and match my fleets a bit, so let's get started. First up, let's build our anti-ship ship, which is going to be a cram cannon ship, maybe with some torpedoes, depending on the cost of them. Now, what I'm thinking for this ship, maybe about this size, maybe a little bit bigger, is that I would like it to actually act like the Marauder, in that it faces the target and has static cram cannons. That way, we can make it all a little bit more compact. But rather than having one large cram cannon, what I'm thinking is maybe six smaller ones, which all fire one after the other. So there's a constant barrage, and honestly, I just think it would look fun. I don't think that's the best thing to do, realistically. I think a larger single shot or... Maybe three larger shots, perhaps mixing in some hardener pellets so that we can have, um, well, just a bit of kinetic value to them so they can explode inside the target it might be better, but instead, loads of explosives, because that's just how I end up building pretty much everything. So, how are we going to do this? So I think it's not going to be the widest ship ever. Let's have a quick look. Maybe going like this. In terms of its size, maybe. Weird wooden skeleton there. Okay, a little while later, and I have made quite a boring looking hull, honestly. It's very similar to a lot of the hulls I've made before, but I think it will get the job done. Really simple, probably haven't really covered all that much of its construction, honestly. Just loads of rooms on the way through, so we can build up nice and defensively if we wish. Currently, it's sitting at a little bit more volume than I'd like, so I might end up redoing the front, making it a little bit stumpier, because we don't really need all this much base, since it's probably going to have an absolutely tiny engine, a medium to small ammo storage, and then just some cram cannons. So... We don't need this much space. But I also don't mind how it looks, which is rare for me. So, yeah. So the decision now is how many cram cannons are we going to use. We could go with just three. If we use three, we do have more potential to have large cram cannons, larger shells, more powerful hits, which means we could use the depth fuse, which means 
our cram shells explode inside the target, dealing damage to their more vital components. If we go with the smaller options, we could still do that, or even just rely more heavily on kinetic damage, or we could just go with multiple explosions, thus we strip the outside of the target, and so a lot of weapons get destroyed. This early on, a lot of the enemies are using wooden armor, they're using quite flimsy, not even that particularly layered armor, and because of that, explosives can be deadly. Even if they're hitting the outside armor, they can strip away weapons, strip away hull caps, it's quite nasty. Later on, depth fuses become a lot more prominent and a lot more useful. At least in my experience. Now, my experience is normally quite flawed, but that's what I've noticed myself. Though having six of them would be really fun to watch. Again, having them slightly delayed each, so one fires and the next and the next and the next and the next, and believe it or not, then the next. That would look awesome. Just this constant attack coming from the ship. But the alpha strike would be terrible. Not too sure... We could also go with mortars. But I feel like I've been using mortars a lot recently, so although I will probably go with mortar craft later on, I think for this one, we are going to stick with the marauder style. Now, I believe even the barrels have been changed. So the motor barrels increase barrel rotation speed, but they don't increase the elevation or... Ah, yeah, nothing. Okay. Okay. So regular barrels, we still have the same firing arc, 35 degrees both ways, and the rotation speed is 5 degrees per second. If we add these, yeah, the actual firing arc stays the same, but the rotation speed increases. How about if I add the elevation barrel? I assume that's still gonna, yep, yeah, that's still going to cost our ability to fire horizontally, but it increases our elevation. Probably going to go with a couple of elevation barrels then. So is there any difference then between the regular barrel and the motor barrel in terms of accuracy? They're both the same cost, so let's see. Inaccuracy is 0 0.6, let's replace it with that instead. 1.1, okay, so the regular barrel is all about accuracy. Don't know how long range this is meant to be. Okay, well, let's just start working on the cannons, or perhaps working on the engine and movement. You know what, I think for once, the movement is going to be more important to do first on this thing, because... Its aiming is going to be literally how fast this thing can turn. If it can't turn, testing out its weapons is going to be really annoying. So a few drastic changes. I'm going to be cutting this one early and that way we should be saving up a lot of volume and I'll just start curving a bit earlier so it's still not completely flat at the bottom. And this middle section here is going to start curving in a little bit earlier as well so that way the back section isn't quite as extreme and hopefully it just looks a bit more natural. So rather than this corner here being all the way over here, it's now all the way back here. So it is going to be a much smaller craft, which is the intention. I don't want this thing to be particularly large in volume so that when we have battles, we can have loads of them if we see fit, or at least doesn't take up from other ships. Tiny little steam engine has been added. We have a basic AI just because I want to see how this thing works with that particular type of steam engine. You know the fact the back is still currently just kind of cut off. Listening, moving out. That's actually pretty quick, considering it's out of the water half the time. We do not need it to be this fast. I mean, it's not that quick. It's only 20 meters per second, but that's faster than I expected and faster than we need. Okay, yep, that tiny steam engine will do. How much... Is that steam engine burning? Now, I actually have very little experience when it comes to the steam pistons. I always normally go with the energy versions, but people have been telling me to try and make something like this over and over again, and so, well, we're giving it a go, and honestly, we could turn that down. It's currently using 1.2 material per second. That is nothing. Considering most battles are only like two or so minutes, that's going to take almost no materials whatsoever. Is that better than a fuel-efficient fuel engine? Um, not too sure, but yeah, we'll stick with that for a while since I don't normally go with that. And I'll mess around with it more later. We could just leave it like this, just with the really stupid backside just being like that. No, no, we'll round it off a bit more, at least a little bit more. So, now we're only burning 0.3 material per second, and we can still get to about 20 meters per second in terms of speed. Of course you can regulate this a lot more, I'm just doing some testing to see what the numbers will be. I understand you can regulate that all depending on your power usage. But yeah, that's actually surprisingly good.
Okay, I might be sold on smaller steam engines, gotta be honest. Should have tested those out way, way sooner. Testing out the AI. Yep, we're pointing towards the target, and because it's too close, we are backing off. Nice and simple. A very non-evasive AI, to be fair, though. If something wants to hit us, we're not really going to dodge all that much. But our weapon should be nice and stable, and it's quite pleasing to watch, in my opinion. So that is the thing. Now, I am realising, I think I've made the hull a little bit too shallow. I might have trouble fitting all the weaponry in. Pretty much everything else is already in, just the ammo and the weapon are needed now. This thing's going to be really cheap. That's kind of the whole point. This is a spam vehicle. We want loads of these in a fight. So when it comes to the weapon, I'm thinking of two possible ways we can do this. Either we can have a single barrel with maximum gauge and depth fuse, like this. Goes inside the target and detonates. Wow, that did a lot. Or we could go down the route. Actually, one second, let me just see what I just did. So went straight through the armor and then detonated in the center here, completely clearing this room, removing several of its bomb compartments, almost shearing the entire section off. That's not bad. But the point is, we can have something like that, which if it hits a critical component will just utterly obliterate it, and this will actually be quite good versus heavily armored opponents and everything else. Or we could go with multiple barrels and just go for sheer damage, try to destroy an area of the target, which would be quite good versus the lighter armored targets we're likely to see in the beginning of the game. That is definitely going to miss. Always does when you first spawn in the Atlas since it drops, so we fire straight away, then it drops and the shell ends up missing. Wow. Okay, that just one shot the Atlas. Bear in mind, the Atlas is a 101,000 resource enemy and is now in the expert section. So I think that there shows the strength of this type of weapon. If you get the perfect hit, you can obliterate targets quite easily. Even more heavily armored targets would end up being destroyed by this, or at least even heavily armored weapons would be taken out with a direct hit. The problem is on such a small craft, the fire, we have to sacrifice something, either the firepower or the fire rate, because I just don't really have enough space for all of the different components in the limited amount of space I've gave us, and also just the fact it costs more now. Still though, that was pretty darn fun to watch. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and then let's go with the option of having three of them, and then we can test out pure explosive versus pen depth again. So here's a halfway point. Essentially, these are still using the same shell type, they're just a bit smaller. And they're firing in a staggered way, just because I think they look a lot cooler. In theory, this does more actual explosive damage, but it is reducing how far into the craft it can go. This will do better versus the really small targets, where the penetration fuse really isn't all that important to sheer damage is good, but it can still get through a couple layers of armor as you can probably see by that. So it still has the potential of knocking out weapons on the inside and even taking things out of the sky like that, just a bit less effectively. In return, more actual damage is dealt. The reload is currently on 16 seconds. I quite like this, honestly. Plus, I did kind of want three of these, so that's kind of clouding my judgement there a bit. Having three firing pieces, honestly, it looks way nicer. Is the enemy dead? Oh, yep, yep, it is definitely dead. So, that's pretty good as well. I think that might be what we go with, plus this way we can change it to pure explosive quite easily if we so desire. So now... Let's just finish off the rest of it, and then this version's done, then we can focus on the anti-air version. Also, we need to uh, clean up the backside of this thing. I will be putting more time into the looks of things in the future. Right now, though, I just want to make sure I have at least two designs, which can go straight into the campaign. I will also be trying to fix at least one of my aircraft before we start. So I'll have an aircraft, along with two very basic ships. Okay, next thing, I'll put the propellers actually into the armour itself, rather than just sticking out like that, because that looks horrendous. I mean, to be fair, the top of this thing is literally just a gun strapped onto uh, a canoe, maybe? But still, that, that just annoys me.
Only thing left to add now is the ammo. I think I'm going to add it here. And over here as well. Just make them into two separate sections. In fact, I have loads of spare armor space here as well. So it's going to be a bit weird, but the ammo is going to be at the front. Again, I know it sounds weird, but that means it's really far away from everything else important. So that's pretty nice. And we're still at only 2,300 volume, and our cost is only 34k, so I would say we have successfully made a cheap craft. <laughs> Who on earth am I? And you know, I think it looks neat. I don't think it looks great, it looks really simple, but I think it looks quite neat. Having loads of these, I think is going to look really cool. I'm actually happy with the design of my own. Well, the end of the world is occurring. It is 2020 after all. Just now realised the music's been a bit loud throughout the video. I do apologise for that. That won't happen again, I do promise. That's just because I am kind of rushing things at the moment, just because I really want all of this sorted out. And I didn't really check all the editing settings in time. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's more stuff we can add to the back. Yeah, okay, so I'll add the ammo now, and we can decide if we're going to add missiles to this thing. And by missiles, I mean torpedoes. If we add some torps to this, it's actually going to be really nasty versus other small craft, other small... Ships, anyway. At least in the deep water guard. I think if we went up against anything stronger than that, we would be crushed. But saying that, normally their ships of this size are more expensive. I've turned off god mode for this, just testing out how our armor does versus the marauder shells. There's lots and lots of stacked armor pretty much everywhere in the core of this thing, so it should be a surprisingly difficult craft to kill. Now, any advanced weaponry like anything designed to go into armor then detonate, will do just fine. But I'm thinking things like cram and, well, basic cram shells and light fire, like um, flak or something, shouldn't really hurt us at all. That would have been number four. Let's wait until we get hit again. Hesh and heat shell should also be just devastating on a side note. Okay, good, good, good. That has destroyed our engine. Good to know, that bit there at the back definitely needs a bit more protection. Fire some vengeance shots! You know, I don't think it quite has the kinetic capability when it's this small. I might just go to pure explosive if I'm going to use three barrels like that. Still, they're going to take a while for us to completely go down, so I'm happy with the first, like, five or six hits. But yeah, clearly this area at the back needs a bit more protection, especially since I have some ammo there, which I think... Yep, the ammo went up, which might have been the cause of all those problems. Okay, the last 15 minutes I've been doing a bit of Tetris with the old cram cannons. I've been making sure the armor is properly done now around the ammunition. Turns out the ammo is right at the top. What I've done is I've moved it down and further forward, away from the engine. This way, it has more armor around it, so it's less likely to detonate at the slightest poke. And it won't take out the engine when it goes up. So that's a lot better than it was a second ago. Now, with the cram cannons, the two side ones are now better than they used to be. They fire faster at only 11 second reload, and they are denser which means they do more damage, have more kinetic value and more armor penetration value, and they're firing more often. Overall, much better. The middle one, though, is exactly the same, since I just didn't have the space to really upgrade it. So, with that, let's do one final test. I think it's going to be okay. It's currently 37,000 resources at 2.8k volume, making it very cheap. Decently small, honestly. And as long as it can beat things like Expert and Above in Deepwater Guard of the same size... I'm happy, and we've already shown it can, but now let's face off against something a bit stronger. The enemy we're going to be facing off against is the Pilferer. This is an expert enemy. It's over double our cost, and it's over double our size, and it is using advanced cannons, which I'm really curious to see if our cram cannons can break in a single shot. They do have the potential to. Well, with all that gauge there, I think it depends where they're going to hit. If they hit somewhere near here and can go through the armor, then they will just detonate. If they hit on the front, there's a good chance that the penetration fuse will be set off early, and it'll just be absorbed by the turret cap. By the way, let's go. That was a lovely hit there. Not really taking out all that much important, but just, just lovely to see. And there goes one of the turrets. Yep, one shot, one kill. 
which is very, very nice to see. That, however, was curious. The shell went through the enemy without detonating, so I'm thinking maybe a time fuse would also be very good. And the enemy's bouncing is really messing up our aim. A lot of consistent but fairly low DPS. I am seeing a fair few blocks in the water now. Oh, there we go. One more of the guns is offline. Yeah, we're taking almost no damage from this. Yeah, for stacked armor, I suppose. Huge internal explosion. The front gun is completely removed. Can we just get hit on the back? If we hit the back, we win. But yet, the shell's doing exactly what I want them to do, going through several layers of armor before detonating. I think if we were against metal armor, like proper layered metal armor, we would not be doing it anywhere near as well. I'd probably say we'd be doing terribly. But, this is the Deepwater Guard, so this is the kind of armor we're going to expect to see a lot of, and I think we're doing just fine. And we proved that lighter weapons don't really hurt us. Can you hit the back or find its AI, please? Because we could still lose. If this thing starts hitting our barrels... Yeah, there's a lot in the water at the moment, so... Some stone there. Which could be where the enemy's AI is located. Oh, so perhaps that's where the engine was located. Not so much anymore. Yeah, time fuses, definitely something we're going to add. Oh, look at that, it detonated way too early. There we go, though. And the enemy is defeated. Managed to remove most of our front, did a bit of damage to the sides, but yeah, the stacked armor held up pretty darn well. Against, like, a full attack of crams or something, obviously it'll break, but once again, this is such a cheap vehicle, I think it does fine. I think it does absolutely fine for how cheap it is. So, let's convert this thing now, then, into an anti-aircraft variant. Which I'm thinking just belt-fed autoloader? And of course, by that, what I mean is just an advanced cannon using belt-fed autoloaders for some rapid fire. And either using very fast kinetic shells or using flak shells. I'm thinking fast kinetic, because that way it could still be a bit useful versus more heavily armoured targets, though still obviously won't be its main focus. Okay, so belt-fed autoloaders are 600 resource each. That is pretty horrendous. Now... In terms of the actual turret itself, we could go with the one-axis turret and then just use the AI mantlet, which would be fine. Or we could potentially go with the two-axis turret, which means it can aim basically completely up. The problem is building that would make it a bit more vulnerable. Also, look all the space we have to build. I think for now we'll stick with the one axis, though I think I'm going to downgrade this to just the regular because this is already expensive as well. And then we're not going to go with the belt fed, we're going to go with the regular. And I think that'll turn out okay. Still not sure if we're going to go with flak or pure kinetic though. I'm thinking flak purely because of flying squirrels. Well, let's see if this works. Well, it took a second to catch up, but there goes the flying squirrel. That's a decent bit of damage. So right now, I'm just using a really basic advanced cannon build. It's a mix of regular autoloaders and belt fed. That way we get the uh, decent fire rate. But then you also get some damage once the belt feds are on their cooldown. Now bear in mind, once we use actual detection systems, things like that spin will be countered a lot better than what we're currently doing. Still, took them both out of the sky pretty well, but how about something a little bit more scary, like the Atlas, or at least Hardy, kind of. 
I'll be able to take out the balloons fairly quick. Yep, the balloons were gone before I even could check. I mean, it's not doing all that much, but it sure is pretty. Took out a lot of the propellers, it seems. So yeah, definitely getting the job done. Now this gun is actually incredibly cheap. Right now, we are still under the 30,000 mark. Which means we can add some missiles or something. So what I'm thinking is that we should just make this a complete support craft. Only using one for every two or three of the other type. And we could use anti-missile missiles. You know, the lovely missile interceptors. Now we could of course turn this gun itself into an anti-missile system. But I would much rather it be focused on dealing damage to enemies. Sure, it's not doing much, but it is going to be able to remove detection systems, barrels, lots of little things off the enemy quite easily. So focus on the lighter flyers first, and then focus on things like this. And it is doing damage. I mean, it did stop the Atlas from reaching us. Again, Atlas is a pretty vulnerable craft, as we've seen, but still. It's something, you know? The way I'm considering adding more gunpowder to these shells are a bit too slow. Oh wow, the one that just got obliterated. And that is that. Okay, let's get to work then. Adding some secondary systems. I'm not going to say this is good, because it isn't. But it is doing better than I expected. And I've also changed the AI. Oh my god, it's actually downing it. So this is in less than a minute of firing. It just does such generalized damage, it ends up knocking off important components. Yeah, the flak is doing great. Honestly, really, really happy with it. And the AI has now been changed, so we circle the target, because of course there's no reason to point at the enemy when we're on a proper turret. What are these shells? I mean, they're just flak, but yeah, um insanely impressed by the fact Flak can do damage. Really should use advanced cannons more rather than cram cannons. I think the third, the third craft we built this um, campaign is going to end up being a proper advanced cannon ship. Probably in the 50,000 resource range. So after taking a look at some of the deep water guard, I've decided we're going to stick with just regular missiles. These are going to be anti-aircraft missiles still, so incredibly agile, and with the ability to track the opponent a little bit better. So they're not really going to hit for much, but they should hit pretty much all the time, at least against anything which isn't flying squirrel level of agile. And even then, maybe they'll still hit. Here we are using missiles using the remote guidance rather than using the more traditional guidance methods. This means they are immune to flares, but also they're going to go after whatever the mainframe is after. And it seems like they work just fine, although it does seem like the target prediction guidance simply doesn't work with them, so might need to swap that out for some other components. We'll do some more testing with that, but yep, those missiles seem to be doing absolutely fine. And I believe they are immune to flares because, if we pop this down here, they are immune to the two types of them. Now, when I say flares, I know a lot of people don't like me saying it like this because it is technically inaccurate, but I'm always going to say it like it. What I'm talking about is the sticky flares, you know, the actual flares, but also this, the radar target simulator. Since this essentially acts like the flare for the infrared missile, but instead it works on the active radar seeker. But now instead, we are using remote guidance. It does seem like... The target prediction doesn't work with it. But either way, they are more than agile enough to catch the squirrels pretty much every single time, which means they'll catch pretty much everything else we're currently fighting, perhaps later on in the game. That won't be the case, but I doubt we're going to be using these little ships in the late game. These are nice and cheap, they're mass-producible, and we're going to have them as the backbone of our military, at least for the time being. As you can probably see, I have now removed the weapon, although it was doing fine. I had way too much of it above the hull, which was just making it way more vulnerable than it had to be. And honestly, I just want to remake it. I wasn't really happy with it. So, let's remake the main weapon, and then this ship is almost done. These missiles aren't too expensive, but they're not exactly cheap either. I mean, we could just make it... We could make it a missile-based craft, so missiles become the main weapon. 
The advanced cannon is very expensive for what it does, and missiles can be a bit more general purpose, but that's the whole point. We don't want to be going general purpose, so no, we're going with the flat cannon. So I've caved in and added a little bit of heavy armor here. I didn't really want to, but this new version will actually be able to fire faster and fire longer. It uses just regular auto loaders as opposed to belt fed. It only has three, no, four belt fed loaders. The rest are just regular auto loaders, but the problem is it's taking up a lot more space. And it is right up against the top, at least in the very core here. So that's a vulnerable section. Everything else is two layers thick, but just around here is definitely a weak spot. So. A single layer of heavy armor. Don't particularly want to do that, and the turret cap will help to cover this up. But I don't want a single missile hitting there and going straight through and causing the whole thing to detonate. So I think this is probably the best thing to do. Testing out the cannon. Yeah, that is much better. Look at that. Fires way faster and more reliably. Only a short break every time it goes through the full cycle, which can be fixed, honestly, but it's messing around with its fire rate. Okay, not bad at all. Actually, not weak in the slightest. So, this is currently at 44,000 resource, so it has hit that mark. Also, it still looks absolutely bizarre, I've got to be honest. So, as you can probably tell, these are quite low-effort designs. Uh, I will be making one more design before we get into the campaign. This is going to be a true advanced cannon build, and it's going to be using something similar to this, but instead using more damaging shells, things like explosive, uh, perhaps pure kinetic. I'm not too sure. There's lots of different things we can go with. But how I see these is kind of drones. I want these to be a flexible drone ship, which I can just spam out whenever I want to, and I can quickly redesign, because the actual hull is pretty good. As we've seen, it is remarkably sturdy, it's very small, it's very cheap, and there's enough space for pretty much any type of weapon. Even a small laser system could be attached to this. Maybe a stretch. Obviously, we'd also have to increase the engine power, but there's space for that as well. So, these are the little drone allies which will be following along our main ships, and they're just to distract the enemy, take a fair few hits, and then probably be discarded. Kind of sad, but... A pretty good description of what they are, to be perfectly honest. The belt-fed loaders are probably now on their cooldown, but yeah. I might swap to pure regular auto loaders, honestly. It would be a lot cheaper, but it would affect the fire rate. At the moment, you can actually see the um, explosive damage stacking up quite quickly. And against things like the Deepwater Guard, specifically against the Deepwater Guard, even their larger flyers, there we go, two damage, that was insane. You can knock them out because they have non-stacked wooden armor in a lot of places, so you can quickly remove all of that, and then vital components are suddenly gone. Against their godly designs, obviously that doesn't apply, but we're not going to see those straight away, so I think this is going to be actually a surprisingly useful ship. So all I need to do now is redo the turret cap, because I absolutely hate that. I'm going to move the turret a little bit further back, in fact, to make it a bit more centralized. And I need to add the detection systems. But the ship itself, functionality-wise, is now finished, as is its twin. Well, here are the quote-unquote finished designs. So, we have the anti-air variant, and we have the anti-ship variant. So, the whole point of this campaign is going to be ships which have a specific purpose, trying my best to go away from general purpose designs. Now, of course, there will be general purpose elements, because that's how the game works. I mean, this ship here can actually do well versus light enemy ships. But it's clearly designed to tank out enemy aircraft, its weapon has fast shells which is completely wasted on slower moving ships, and that takes away from the firepower, its missiles are basically the same, very fast, very agile, but not much in the way of their payload. Great versus small flyers, terrible versus small ships, at least comparatively. We then of course have the anti-ship variant, which uses armor penetrating cram shells, and cannot really fire enemy aircraft very well. Although it can aim up quite well, it can't turn all that quickly, so things can run circles around it. This is going to be better versus the slower enemies, and can pack an oddly decent punch if it hits the target. Now when I add the detection systems, I can mess with that, so hopefully that will be a bit better, and... 
I am very tempted to convert the cram cannon back to just a single cram cannon, which just really, really hurts the enemy, rather than three shots, which are all a little bit weaker. It seems like that may be the better option. Or just pure explosive, since their size currently doesn't really allow for that much kinetic value. I could just go pure explosive, so pure damage. That's kind of the purpose of these craft, though. They're very easy to change up. The hull itself did much better than I expected. It can really take a beating, and the weapon space is actually pretty okay. So we can change these up in a moment's notice, quickly add a new weapon, change up the armor, change up loads of stuff, and then make it however we want it in a current fight. Am I saying these ships are good? No, not in the slightest, but I think they're good for their cost. Bear in mind that these cost around about the same as the Marauder. This actually costs less than the Marauder. This one here costs 10,000 more, and the Marauder is 35,000. So that's okay. Considering the Marauder's price, these do pretty darn well, especially this one. This one has surprised me. So the next ship I'm going to be designing is going to be an advanced cannon ship, and that's going to be the last design before we get into the campaign itself. This one I will be putting a bit more effort into, making it look like a proper ship, not a sort of drone, which is kind of how these look. It looks like, obviously, these wouldn't really be manned. They're there to be controlled by another ship or some faraway force. So with that, any name suggestions would be very welcome for these ships. I'm thinking that we have just one name for them, and then we have the specific role next to it. So blah blah blah, anti-air, blah blah blah, anti-ship, cram cannon, whatever you want to call it. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. The next ship we build will hopefully look a lot more ship-like, but I've actually had loads of fun today, and I think for once, I've successfully built a couple of small ships, which is something I could never do. So I'm happy enough, even if they do look a little bit weird. Actually, now I look at it, it kind of makes me think of the Corvettes from Stellaris. Only just noticed that, and I'm never going to be able to unsee it. Well, thank you so much for watching. See you next time, and goodbye. The campaign is very soon.